Welcome to Take You Through. Please like, subscribe and tap the bell icon to never miss any future videos. Only less than 1% of my subscribers are watching my videos and all the other 99% are not subscribed. So if you love technology and if you like the content I create, please consider subscribing to my channel as it really helps it to grow. Hello, take you through channel watchers. Today I want to compare my current MacBook Pro 16 inch laptop to the brand new MacBook Air M1 Apple Silicon 13 incher. But let's start with the MacBook Pro 16 inch computer. Let's open up the lid. And you can see that after a one and a half or two seconds, the display turns on. And now to the brand new MacBook Air with Apple's new M1 processor. So first of all, let's open the lid. And the best thing about it compared to the 16 inch MacBook Pro is that there is practically no wait time once you open the lid. The computer is ready to work right away. So let's open the lid. And there you have it, your MacBook Air M1 is ready to go. Both computers are in uh, base configurations. Check the about the Mac. You can see it's the base 2.6 GHz 6 core i7 processor with the 16 GB of RAM and 512 GB of SSD. And it has the AMD Radeon Pro 4 GB of graphics card. Now let's check the technical specifications. Let's go to the About the Mac. All the information is very minimal here. You just see the chip Apple M1, year 2020, 8GB of RAM memory. The base model has 245GB, usually it's 250. And the MacBook Pro 16 inch has 500 gigabytes of SSD and 16 gigabytes of memory. So this is the base model and it has 8 core CPU and the 7 core GPU. The upgraded M1 model has one GPU core more. Now let's try to restart the computer and let's see how long it takes for the MacBook Pro 16 inch. Let's restart and let's go. And it was about 15 seconds, maybe a little bit under 15 seconds. And now let's restart this M1 MacBook Air computer. Click restart and once again restart. And there we go. And it's about 15 seconds for the M1 MacBook Air to restart. All right, now let's try open a Final Cut project. And there I have one of my video, already with all the effects on it. And let's try to export it. And let's choose Apple devices 4K. Click next, desktop. The project will be 111. And let's save it. And let's start counting. background tasks so you can see the percentage let's minimize this window now we are on 30 percent minute and uh, almost two minutes and the fans haven't yet kicked in so it's completely silent at this point now I can hear them starting to work. So 50% and 3 minute mark. Seventy percent and 4 minutes. Now we can hear the fans working hard. So the video 
has been successfully copied in 5 minutes 42 seconds about 5 minutes and 40 seconds for the MacBook Pro 16 inch base model and now let's do the same test in Final Cut Pro with this MacBook Air M1 it will be the same iPhone 12 Pro video as an example we will just put it here in timeline you can see this is the same video we exported on the MacBook Pro 16 inch and let's try how long it will take for this MacBook Air M1 to copy the same video. The noticeable thing here is that the MacBook Pro 16 inch has the dedicated graphics card and it has the extra horsepower to render and copy video maybe faster and this MacBook Air M1 doesn't have any fans here inside, no cooler system and no nothing like that. Maybe that will be the difference between them. But right now let's do it the same way. We will copy to Apple devices 4K, like that, and I'll have my timer here. Now let's click next, let's save it to desktop, click save, and let's open the progress bar here, minimize this one, and let's click start. And only after 45 seconds, 44 seconds, it starts copying the video. after a three and a half minutes it's only the third percent here so copying to 4k video will be a hard task for the M1 MacBook Air and as you can see it's already five minutes and only four percent there's no reason for me to continue this way you see that it's very hard it takes very long time to even complete anytime soon so I'll be cancelling this copying process now I click stop here and I click stop here. So let's close this one. And I want to show you the, a better way how to copy videos in Final Cut Pro. I created a HEVC 10-bit profile that has much less of capacity of the file and it renders and copies much more faster. So basically you use comp compressor app and here's the profile. Because I, I am filming with my iPhone 12, it has the Dolby Vision and all the good stuff in 10 bit. And this is the profile I created. This is a topic for another video. And if you go to the video section here, you need to change some things here. You need to change this encoder type to faster, standard quality, or high. If you want higher quality, you can go slower. I selected faster and the profile should be 10 bit for those of you who are filming with the iPhone 12 or 12 Pro or 12 Pro Max. And in the audio section, you can just click here the maximum quality audio. So that's the profile in the compressor app. And let's try to render and copy this video in this profile here in AGVC 10-bit. So let's click that one. Let's click next. Let's get this timer here again. Let's click save. And now let's watch the magic. Here, let's click start. And hope that this process will go much, much more faster. And as you can already see, it's already 3%, much more faster. You got the 4K resolution, you have the 10-bit video and much less of a space for this file. So if you want the best from both worlds, the new MacBook Air with M1 processor without cooling fans, without dedicated video card, please use this option to convert to this custom-made profile. So after 3 minutes it's 50% of copying and the best part you don't hear any fans as compared to the MacBook Pro 16 incher. Completely silent, maybe a little bit hot, but completely silent. And the video copying is done in 5 minutes 58 seconds with the 10-bit custom made profile. So as the fans are still working extremely hard. We can close the final cut and just see that the MacBook Pro 16-inch has the touch bar. 
I don't really like the touch bar that much. I really miss the, the physical F key row that the MacBook Air has. So as well, you can see it has four USB type C ports on each side, as well as headphone jack. So, as I mentioned in my previous video where I unboxed the new MacBook Air M1, I mentioned that I really like the difference between the MacBook Pro 16-inch laptop and this one because this has no touch bar. So we can see that it has the old-school F keypad row. There are some differences. You can make the screen brighter, but you have new F4 there's the search option, then F5 is the dictation, and F6 is the do not disturb button. Usually the old MacBook Airs had the keyboard brightness buttons here, but you can change the keyboard brightness here in this panel. I don't know how convenient it is, but it is what it is. But the best part that you have these physical buttons here, you can change the display brightness or the volume here much faster but the best thing about this computer is the combination of the F button row with this touch ID button here this is subjectively my preferred choice my favorite combination so next thing it's really much more lighter much tinier but it has only two USB type C Thunderbolt ports here both can be for charging or external hard drives but you can see the design it's very slim the computer is very lightweight and here you have only a had the headphone jack compared to the macbook pro 16 inch it had two usb type c thunderbolts on each side that's the main design difference here very minimal and very beautiful now let's check the black magic disk speed test and for the macbook pro 16 incher you can see how fast these are so you can see writing is 2500 megabytes even more as well as the reading speeds are extremely fast now let's try the aja system test application and let's try the same test here let's start and these are the speeds let's click once again and the third time about that writing and reading speeds for the internal ssd and now to the m1 macbook air internal ssd speed test let's open up the blackmagic disk speed test application let's just click start so you can see this m1 macbook air has similarly if not even faster read and write speeds over two gigabytes per second let's quit this app let's open up aja system test application and let's click start here once again and the third time about the same 2000 megabytes per second write speed and 2700 read speed let's run the geekbench test for the MacBook Pro 16 inch. And here are the results for the MacBook Pro 16 inch 2019 model. Single core score 1085 and multi core score 5730. So now let's run the Geekbench CPU benchmark test on the M1 MacBook Air. And here is the difference. Here are the results. The MacBook Air late 2020 M1 scored 1731 on a single core score and 7677 on the multi core score. Now let's run the compute benchmark test. And there you can see the score 25,217 for MacBook Pro 16 inch late 2019.
And here are the results for the MacBook Air M1, 17,126 on OpenCL score. Now let's open the Unigen Heaven benchmark app and let's choose the extreme ultra settings and click run. You should hear the fans loud now. And here are the scores for the Unigen Heaven benchmark 4.0. You can see there are 38.8 frames, frames per second, score is 977, minimum frames per second 20.3 and maximum is 91. So now let's test the Unigen Heaven Benchmark 4.0 on the MacBook Air M1. Let's just click here the, all the extreme settings and just click run here. So after choosing the extreme settings, there was no response and we just click the basic settings and try to run on the basic settings. And here are the results for the basic test. As you can see, it has frame rate per second 58 score 1460 minimum frame rate is 12 and the maximum frame rate is 87.1 these are the results for the basic preset compared to the macbook pro 16 inch that had the extreme settings and now let's run the gfx bench metal And here are the results. You can see the frames. You can pause the video and see all the categories and frames and the average frames. And now to the MacBook Air M1 and the GFX Benchmark Metal. Let's click Start All. And here are the results for the MacBook Air M1 and you can check on and again pause this video to see the results in the frames and the average frame rates for all the tests. And to compare you can see the Apple M1 has 1961 frames compared to the, all the NVIDIA GeForces here. And the last thing we will test will be the Samsung T5 drive speed test. This is a very fast external SSD drive because the rumors are that the M1 Apple chip slows down the external SSD drives. So there is only one way to make sure, and that is to plug this drive in and test the speed of it. So let's start with the MacBook Pro 16 inch and Blackmagic Disk speed test. So let's choose the target drive. Let's click on the Samsung T5 and open up and click start. So these are the speeds that Samsung T5 should have, about 500 megabytes per second write and read, and AJA system test. Let's click on Samsung T5 once again and open up, click start. And these are the speeds once again. Let's click second time. There you go. These are the SSD speeds on the MacBook Pro 16 inch for the Samsung T5 as external SSD. So now we will need to make sure if the rumors are true that the Apple Silicon MacBooks are slowing down the external hard drives. So therefore we need to test this Samsung T5 external SSD speeds. 
here on the M1 MacBook Air. So I'll now connect this drive to the M1. So it shows up here, Samsung T5. And let's open up our speed test applications. So we we'll start with the black magic. But before we test, we need to click here on the settings and select the target drive. We select the Samsung T5 and open up. Let's start. And as you can see, it really is, the drive really works slower. The basic speed was about 500 megabytes write and read on the Intel Macs. And you can really see the difference that the Apple Silicon Macs slow down the external SSD drives, not the internal ones. Inter internal ones may be even faster than the Intel Macs have, but yeah, you can see it only 300 to about 350, 380 to the read speeds. All right, let's try the AJA system test. Once again, let's click Samsung T5 and open up, click start. And it's the same story, under 300 megabytes per second write and 380 megabytes per second read. Let's try again. And about the same. So 120 to 200 megabytes less than on the Intel Max. That's the reality, I don't know why, but the rumors are true. So in conclusion, here are all the results and comparison for the MacBook Pro 16 inch from Intel to the Apple Silicon MacBook Air M1. So I made a tab so you can see all the results. And in my opinion, if you own the Intel MacBook Pro 16 inch laptop, there is no reason to swap it uh, to the M1 Max. The benefits for the MacBook Air M1 is the battery life, smaller compact design, but the benefit for the MacBook Pro 16 inch is a dedicated graphics card that you saw in the benchmarks that you can't run the Unigen Heaven test with the extreme settings on the M1, not that you need, because most of us who buy the M1 MacBook Air do not render 4K or even bigger video files. The main thing is portability, plus the very good CPU power that Apple Silicon M1 provides. Great battery life, super fast respond time when opening the lid. So everyday tasks like basic everyday tasks work much faster. So thank you for watching. I hope I I could help you decide if your MacBook Pro 16 inch is worth keeping right now or do you want to buy the MacBook Air M1. It's up to you, but anyway, both computers are excellent machines, so if I could, I, I would own both of them. But as I mentioned in my previous videos, I sold my MacBook Pro 16 inch and bought this one because it's cheaper and much reliable in everyday tasks. And I really like the fast respawn time when I open the lid, all these little everyday things that make me happy and mainly the battery life, of course.